blue jeans for letting us go two weeks and letting us down two weeks in a row. Um, and I left my notes over in the other place. All right, I'm back. Here we go. So because I'm not able to um, advertise, I mean, um, broadcast through blue jeans, I'm not able to share the pictures and everything as well. However, tonight's message is very important and I want to make sure that um, don't cheat anybody out of it. Um, I want to talk about first time home buyer programs and the truth about them because there's more misconceptions out there than there is reality. Um, I, I can't drive around anywhere without seeing signs on the side of the road that say free $20,000 for buying a house and it's just like on a bandit sign like you know stapled to a stop sign or something like that um, and all this crazy stuff that's going on and I, I can't you know we buy houses this and that yeah they're going to buy your house but they're going to give you you know a really horrible deal on it as well um, so let's start with some of the truth a lot of people ask about tax benefits. Yes, there definitely is a very legitimate tax benefit when you um, first buy a house, when you're a first time home buyer. This first benefit that I'm gonna talk about is not one that a lot of people get mixed up. It's probably one that a lot of people don't even know about, and it is the tax benefit. And a special shout out to my good friend, Michael, with uh, Key Title for um, setting me straight on this with a bunch of details and everything. But I'm gonna give you guys the uh, short and sweet version of it. Essentially, whenever you buy something, whether you buy a stereo, a TV, a car, anything like that, you pay tax on it. When you buy a house, you pay a tax on it as well. It's a lot less of a percentage, thank the Lord, because if it was 6% in Maryland, that'd be a lot of extra money that people were trying to come up with and it just wouldn't happen. Um, so I hope nobody from, um, you know, the legislature is watching and thinking, oh, we should change it to 6% because that would be horrible. Um, but there is a, a, a tax when you buy. And if you're a first time home buyer, and the definition of first time home buyer for this benefit is you've never owned in Maryland. So if you've owned in Pennsylvania or you've owned somewhere else, or maybe in some cases, if you had inherited a house, but you it hasn't been put in your name yet, you can take you know, your chances with that, your your life is in your own peril there if you try to do it and they find out about it later. But basically it's for people that have never owned in Maryland, never had a house in their name, period. You can benefit from that, um, the discount and the transfer tax. So um, there's state transfer tax, county transfer tax, and the um, recordation tax. So there's three taxes that you get and you can basically get about a one third to a one half discount on the total amount that those are in. It differs from county to county. Some counties don't even give you some of the discounts, but you definitely get it from the state and you can get some of it from the county as well. So I just wanted to let you know about that. The second one and the one I wanna spend most of the time on tonight. Oh, and by the way, Kim, just a shout out to Kim. Kim is on the other side of the country right now. I gave her the week off and she doesn't like talking about um, very um, tight, stringent things like this. She's, she likes the more fun stuff. So I gave her the week off, and instead of having a lender on here and making them come over to my house at 8 o'clock at night, I decided that you guys could just be blessed with just me. So again, the second type is uh, money to help with the cost of the house. When you're thinking about buying a house, just to give you a little background, you need to think of buying the house as two buckets. There is the down payment and there is the closing costs, okay? Important things to remember is the down payment can only come from you, your immediate family, or a government program. You can't find it on the street, it can't be from mattress money, and you can't get it from the seller. Closing costs, you can get from pretty much anywhere. As long as it's a verified source, you can get it from just about anywhere. So that's not really our concern. Um, for a typical house, you know, maybe a $200,000 house, you might be looking at um, a down payment of roughly seven grand for an FHA loan and closing costs may be in the range of about eight grand. If you give the seller a pretty good deal on their house, um, they may pay for half of your closing costs or they may even pay for all of your closing costs. 
when we meet and we sit down, we're going to go over the specifics about your um, situation and how much money you need for what kind of house you're going to get, what kind of program and everything. But for the sake of this call, we're just mainly going to focus on the down payment because that's the one where you can get government help. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight, what's real and what's not real. So again, with the down payment, you can get that from you, um, the government or family. If you can get it from yourself or family, that is probably the way to go and not mess around with any of these programs. Um, they all come, come with a catch. So, you know, here's more of the details about it. All right. Um, there are national programs, there are state programs, there's county programs, and there's also bank specific programs. Um, there are neighborhood programs. I mean, it can get as specific as maybe where you work, live near where you work. There's a whole bunch of different programs out there. I'm not going to name names tonight and throw anybody under the bus. Um, like, you know, you know that we're not too, um, we're not definitely afraid of doing that. Um, there are a couple of major programs. Uh, I will name one name, not like as a positive or a negative, but um, the Maryland Mortgage Program is a collective name for the programs that um, you can get from Maryland. And it does differ a little bit from county to county how you get it and everything, but that is one program that a lot of people um, use. So what you need to do, first of all, when you're trying to figure out these programs is you need to stop worrying about the programs up front. First of all, you need to get yourself a good realtor, one that you trust, one that's gonna steer you in the right direction, and one that seems knowledgeable about this stuff. Quiz them, ask them about the different programs. Are they grants? Are they loans? Do a little research yourself. When I am looking for insurance people, accountants, this, that, and the other, and I've got some great ones, by the way, I do my research, I study up on what I need to know about it, and then I go in there and I interview them. And by golly, if they don't know more about it than me, when I'm quizzing them, I'm out the door and I'm moving on to somebody else. So um, start with your lender. I mean, start with your realtor, that's me. Then, secondly, right after that, we're gonna steer you in the direction of a lender or two. Depending upon what type of program we think that you're going to qualify for, we're going to steer you in that direction. That's why I work with several lenders. They're all awesome in their own special way, but they all have different strengths and weaknesses about different things that they can do. So we're going to help you point you in the direction of a good lender or two. Your lender is going to pull your credit. They're going to examine your work history, how much money you make, your assets, all of that, and they're going to use all of that to evaluate which programs you qualify for. So right there and then, you're going to know. Because if you do all the research for the blah, blah, blah program, and it turns out you don't qualify for it because you make too much money, it's not where you work. It's um, for houses that are not like the house that you're looking for. It's in the wrong area, this, that, the other. Then you've just wasted a bunch of time becoming an expert on the blah, blah, blah. You know, So definitely... Um, Get with your realtor, get with your lender, tell them about what you're interested in. Be honest about how much money you have. I ask this question all the time. It's, it's the funniest question that I ask. How much money do you have to put towards a house? And the number one answer is, nope, not nothing. That's the number two answer. Um, just kidding. The number one answer is, it depends. And I get it. People don't want to tell me how much money they have. It's okay. I don't need to know how much money you have. What I need to know is, how much money do you have that you can put towards the down payment? How much of your vast millions of dollars that you have do you have that you can put towards the down payment? So if you have an inheritance, if you have savings, if you have mattress money, if you have you know, coins that you have been saving up since a child, whatever the case may be, I need to know how much of that are you putting towards this house purchase? <clears throat> and sometimes people will ask me, well, how much do I need? So then... I will ask them then, well, what are we looking for? And sometimes we can start the conversation different ways, but in the end, we need to know how much you have so we, need to, so we can find out what type of programs are best for you. All right, as I mentioned, they have income, geography, other limitations. Your lender's gonna help decipher which ones are right for you. But I wanna talk about three main groups of programs. First, there are grants. And a lot of lenders, and I have been guilty of this myself, a lot of people call things grants when they're not grants. If I give you a grant, it essentially is a gift. I don't know what the Webster's Dictionary definition is. I see that some of my 
former students have checked in and stuff, they can look it up for me and let me know. But as far as a grant is concerned, it's something that's a gift. It may not be a gift immediately, but it's something that you should be able to earn as a gift and not have to pay back, okay? If it's not, if it's something you have to pay back, then it's not a grant, and let's call it what it is. It's a loan, okay? You cannot go out and get your own loan to get a loan. Like if you need a down payment, you can't go to uh, the credit union, for example, and get a personal loan for seven grand and be like, okay, now I've got my seven grand because you can't get a loan to get another loan. So you're going to have to ha come up with your own money or use a um, federal grant or loan or something like that. Now, I know you just said you can't use a loan for that. However, the government can get, can get away with that. You can get a loan from the government. The Maryland Mortgage Program is a loan. It's a loan that does not have to be paid back until you sell it, you refinance it, or you pay it off after 30 years. So if one of those things happens, if anything happens to end the loan, then you don't have to pay, and then you have to start paying it back. But until then, you don't start paying it back, which is a great program because most people do not um, have to worry about paying it back until they sell their house. And by the time you sell your house, your house has enough equity that your house actually pays the loan off for you and it doesn't come out of your pocket, which is a great thing. Um, the, the, um, the grants are very popular because they don't have to be paid back, but the grants run out of money very quickly. They're very popular. They come around certain times of the year. You got to watch for them. You need a lender who knows where they're at, um, when they're coming around, so you can be ready for them. So all of this is about preparation. The loans replenish themselves because they're self-sufficient, they pay themselves back. So they tend to stay around for quite some time. Um, and then there's the scams, okay? The scams are not real at all. So they might as well be grants or, you know, make-believe or, you know, magic candy or something like that. Um, they come from roadside signs that you should not believe. Um, they sadly even can come from some realtors and lenders that either don't know what they're doing or are purposely misleading people. Hopefully, not the second. Um, these things are too good to be true, so check them out. Make sure they're you know not too good to be true. Um, there are some other programs and programs that um, some of my clients have brought up to me recently as well, um, where you have to do a lot of community service, or you have to attend a lot of classes or anything like that. <clears throat> you have to weigh the pros and cons of that. It's good to be eyes wide open going into these things. Um, one of the programs in particular, you have to do like, I think you have to attend like five sessions and volunteer um, with them to be able to participate in this program. Um, this program in particular, it can take up to three months to get closed. You are not going to get a seller in today's market to agree to wait if you're doing that type of program. It's the sellers that'll wait for that are probably like one in a hundred. So good luck finding that one. There's so many different factors in this. That's why we need to definitely talk with everyone. So what you need to do, do your research, get a good realtor. Go on Zillow, go on Google, do whatever you gotta do to research us, find a good realtor. Also, same thing, get, get some reviews, get some lenders, get some recommendations, um, all of that stuff. Always read the fine print, ask a lot of questions. Um, I guess if there was one complaint I had about you know, when I meet with my clients is that maybe sometimes they don't ask enough questions and then they ask questions later on. So ask as many questions as you can. I love it when people are educated. The only stupid question is the one that you don't ask. Um, there's no one-stop shop for everything. You, you, you definitely need to check around, see what it, you're interested in. Um, if you're interested in doing a rehab loan, you know, because you're interested in getting a house and fixing up and making it your own then there are definitely certain lenders you want to talk with, and definitely certain lenders that you don't want to talk with. Um, if you're looking to do an FHLB loan, there's only certain lenders that do that. If you're looking to do a home partnership loan, there's certain lenders that do that. Maryland Mortgage Program. So there's a lot of different programs out there. Probably just about every lender has something that's tailored to first-time home buyers. First question when you're talking with them, is this a loan or is this a grant? Do I have to pay it back? If I do have to pay it back, Excuse me. Is there any way that I can avoid paying it back? Can I live here for five years and not pay it back? Is there something else you can do? Is there any penalty for taking this money? There are some deals where you actually get penalized 
for borrowing that money. And by penalize, I mean you get a slightly higher rate. Not so bad in today's market, but if we get to the point where we're at 6% and you have to pay 6.5% to borrow that money, then maybe it's not such a good thing. So definitely meet with us, talk with us about everything. Let us go over your specific situation. Be honest with us. We're going to be brutally honest with you. We're going to tell you what you can do and what you can't do. Give you as much advice as we can. So if there's anything that we can help you with, please give us a call. In the meantime, check us out at thepomfreyteam.com. You can search on there. You can find out what your home is worth on there. <clears throat> you can find out information about communities on there, and you can contact on the, us on there as well. I've got a great blog on there that um, I post on several times a week, and check us out on Facebook. If you have any questions, please shoot them to me. I love questions. If you have questions about something that's already in process, it's never too late until the, you know, the, the ink is signed and you, you've written your name all over everything 100 times. It's never too late to ask questions and figure out what's going on. So thank you guys for tuning in. Love you guys all and have a great evening.